Hello YouTube, I am R and Peter, and today I'd like to give you a quick tip about how to work with colors in, in Game Maker. So here I have a screen with an orange circle in the middle of it, and we're going to look at how we did that. So I made an object with a draw event, and we're drawing a circle, which is pr pretty basic. Most of you probably know how to draw a circle in Game Maker. However, veterans among you will know that you can change the color of the circle using this draw set color function. But wait, there's more. Um, let's say that you know, orange is a great color. I don't know why I'd choose anything different. Orange is the best color, in my opinion. But let's say that this particular shade of orange does not meet the proper ambient atmospheric um, criteria for your game. Let's say you're more of an artsy person and you care more about that sort of thing. I don't know. Well, then you're in kind of a pinch in Game Maker because, you know, the, these these color contents are great, but there's only, like, what, 16 of them or so? I don't know. There's There's very limited amount so if you want a different shade of orange or something like that you're, you're kind of out of luck so for that we're gonna need to do something different so we have the first solution which is color constants and there's another way you can do it is you can do it using the a function called make color RGB this way you can be far more specific in, what, in your which color you want instead of the 16 or so constants you can have what 256 to the power of three different colors you can use so if I want to do, do, use different shade of orange I can simply put in the code for the color of orange I want and by the way if you're not familiar with uh, these RGB values we can set up a sprite jump in here and make color and you can adjust them in here so in this case the color orange would be something like that so there's a red a green and a blue and those represent the three color values for your color. So, you know, one way to, one way to generate this custom color is using this make color RGB method. And there's another method you can use called let's see, make color HSV. So let me see what that is. So we have red, green, blue right here, but next to it you have hue, saturation, and luminosity. And this is a different color system. And it's better when you want to um, when you want to have control over the hue. So let me see. You can see the hue changes. It doesn't change how bright it is. It just changes what color it is. So, or what shade or what hue you know, what what hue it is. So that in some situations is a better way of doing it. So for that, you have the make color HSV. And I don't know the orange code off the top of my head, but you know you can do it the same way. Except these are HSV codes instead of RGB codes. So that's RGB, HSV. And then the way that I like best, the way that I found re most recently, the way that's most concise while being still very accurate is to do it using your, the hexadecimal code. So um, each of these values, both of these systems, I believe, or well, I know it's an RGB. In RGB, you can specify values between 0 and 255. Does it seem kind of odd to you? Well, the reason why they picked 255 is because that's how m how much data can fit into eight eight binary digits, or two hexadecimal digits. So that way, you know, each of these values represents a byte of data. So instead of specifying like this, I can just write down the hexadecimal code for it. So 255 is FF in hexadecimal. 128, I believe, is 88. That might be 127. I'm not sure. And then the third one is zero, zero, 0 to 0, 0. And then, so that's this value translated into hexadecimal. And then to make to tell GameMaker, hey, by the way, this is this is a, this is a number, you put a dollar sign in front of it. And there we go. This, speci this is the number corresponding to this color. And we can put in this instead of this whole function, which saves a lot of time. And if you can read hexadecimal, then this works just fine. Um, so in Game Maker's dollar sign, in it's most programmers have some, something, like, something like this. I believe in other ones it's often a zero x instead of a dollar sign, but you'll have C for your particular language. So yeah, this is a much e easier way, in my opinion, to to specify colors. And as we can see when we play it now, it will have the orange hue that we're looking for. <laughs> That's really sad. RGB. All right. Well, I learned something new. So, oddly enough, this is in reverse order. So, uh, this 
when you reverse it. So this is actually B G R. So that should be it. There we go. That's the that's the color we're looking for. So yeah, it's B G R. But might might be confusing at first to have a hexadecimal number and have it be in reverse order. But it's much more concise. And in doing so, you you increase your understanding of hexadecimal, which in turn increases your understanding of binary, which allows you to talk with the computer at a more intimate level. So that's always a good thing, in my opinion. More learning is good. So yeah, that's all for this little quick tip. Please let me know what you thought in the comments, and look forward to talking to you again soon.